Welcome back Arcadians and Nintendo collectors. Alex here with the very special Christmas edition. Yes, I've got a lovely Christmas tree in the background. That's about it. <laughs> no, honestly, I have a ton of pickups to show you in this video. An absolute ton of games. And we're gonna be looking at what I've been playing. And of course, we're gonna do some gameplays as well. So if you love 16-bit and you love 8-bit and you love arcade games, you come to the right place. So Merry Christmas everybody. Now as I always like to start my videos with what I've been playing and any changes to the arcade. Um, as you can see, the first major change is this beautiful Philips OLED 45 inch screen, I think it is. You know what, I can't remember what size it is now. But it is a perfect size for this arcade. That other one was just far too small. And as I love playing my modern games as well on the Switch, and I've recently just picked up a PS4, although I haven't played it yet. <laughs> My son would be going, why haven't you got any games yet? <laughs> he loves his PS4. But um, I've got so many new Switch games I've been playing. This is a fabulous game, Cruising Blast. You can't see right now, but when the game is in the attract mode, or when you're playing a game or watching a movie, you've got LEDs that are on the back of the telly, and it gives an ambient uh, feeling um, in the room because the lights change to whatever the, the, the mood is in the game. Really, really cool, beautiful screen on that, and it's great for playing new games and old games as well. Because um, I've got a couple of Famicom systems I've picked up, which I'll show you in this video. I'm having to play on this at the moment because they're not RGB modded and they look great on it as well. So with this TV on the back wall, I've had to change things around. So I had my Vectrexes down here next to the speakers. I've had to move them over to this side, which is much easier to play at a desk. Um, I can have the controller sitting down here and play my Vectrex games, which is really nice, but that means I've had to move my Sony Triniton 14 inch, which is a beautiful screen, over to this side. But that's nice too, because now I can sit in this big chair, my big swivel chair, my Bond villain chair. <laughs> and play my PC Engine over here as well, whatever console I've got hooked up at the time. So that's really nice. Um, my, my Defender Neon is now working, thanks to Mark. He's changed the power supply on it. It's absolutely beautiful. I love neon lights. I love the lighting in here. It looks amazing, especially with my DMD display as well, which Paul Buller kindly updated, put new, new GIFs on there for me. So I've got Mega Drive. Um, Super Nintendo, Spectrum, and arcade gifts constantly running, um, and got rid of the time and date as well, which I don't need, because I usually go to my phone for that. So that's nice. What else has changed? I've got my Metroid Dread poster now framed on the wall, one of my favorite games of all time. I love Metroid anyway, you know I do, guys. But I absolutely love that game, and I wanted to get some nice artwork for it, so that's now up on the wall. It's got a cool rainbow metallic effect going on as you move around it. And it's the scene where the, um, the EMMI is attacking Samus, which is really cool. And I've got a Oliver Frey picture, which was the first edition of Crash Magazine on the wall there. A Zelda picture, which actually came with the Famicom disc system. Original flyer that is and my sheriff flyer, which I you know, I've got original cab of so that's really cool um, So I've been playing down here. I've been playing wheelie on the spectrum an old classic of mine a favorite game of mine from back in the day Really nice game vector pilots getting some love and I've been playing red baron Which is a really cool old arcade vector game It's running on the vetrex on the vet fever carts and that is linked up to my amp and if i just turn up the volume it's linked up to the neon speakers which are here and it is so cool guys this game it's got such cool sound listen to that if you've never played red baron you owe it to yourself to play this game well it's gonna be very difficult for you to play this game because it is 
a Vector game, you can only really play it on a Vectrex with a Vec Fever car, or if you ever find an arcade of game, arcade machine of the game in the wild, it's it's a bit like um, Battle Zone. I think it's actually better than Battle Zone. It's a lot easier, a lot a lot more playable. So you can shoot the targets in the environment on the ground. I just got killed, so I'm trying to do it with one hand. And you can also shoot the planes in the sky like that. It's so cool. Such a cool game. I'm going to turn that down. Tarakan 2 is getting a lot of love. That was in my last Super Nintendo pickup. So if you love Super Nintendo games, go and check out my Super Nintendo pickups videos. Oh, this game is so cool because it's got loads of Mode 7 going on. Loads of different variations in the levels. Brilliant game. So happy to have that on the Super Nintendo. I've also picked up this Hydra 2 SCART adapter, which I've wanted for ages. They're not cheap, guys. They're about £200, but you can, you can add about, what is it, one, two, it's four, about eight SCARTs in here. So you can have eight consoles and eight computers all underneath your TVs here. And whatever one's on at the time, it will display on that TV. So it saves you swapping out the SCART plugs all the time. I've put up with cheap and nasty SCART adapters for years and I finally invested in this and I absolutely love it. It's such a great investment for me because I use it all the time. And so I'm chuffed to have that in the games room. What else has changed? Um, I've got my Louisville Slugger now on the wall, which I got with the Skyskipper project. It's got my name on there, Alex Crowley, Nintendo Arcade, Louisville Slugger. It's a genuine Louisville slug. I actually visited the factory and me and my good friend Whitney got these made up and gave them out to Billy Mitchell and John from John's Arcade got one. We gave him one. He's got one on display in his arcade and Whitney's got one as well. So that's nice to finally have that back up on the wall. Um, so yeah, got a PS4. <laughs> my son would be pleased. I've now got a PS4, though I won't be doing PS4 pickups, guys. It's not that sort of channel, unless it's some sort of arcade game I'm into. But I'm playing a lot of SNES, uh, SNES games. I'm playing a lot of Switch games, and it, they look fantastic. Cruising Blast, what a game. What a fantastic arcade game. So this game was developed by Eugene Jarvis with his company Raw Frills, and this game has been in the arcade a long time. Well, since two, uh, 2017, I think it was released. And I fell in love with it in the arcade, and when they told us they were going to release it for the consoles, I was like, wow, I'm blown away. It's such a great game, such a great arcade racer. If you like your arcade racers, it's totally over the top. Really cool game. Um, on the PC Engine, on my 14-inch Sony, I'm playing a bit of Gradius. Great arcade conversion on the PC Engine. And it's great, I can sit here in my swivel chair, my Bond villain chair, <laughs> and play the PC Engine on my Sony Triniton. Got a ton of pickups to show you guys. Um, at the top, I've had to change things around, so I've got my Vectrex games at the top, and my Citadel miniatures, which I brought from back in the day, all original Rao Parfer Citadel miniatures from Games Workshop in Hammersmith, the only Games Workshop that was around in the early 80s, which is in Hammersmith. I used to go and buy all these figures, they're all hand painted by me, and my Sinclair Spectrum games behind there. I've got a few new Amiibo pickups. I haven't bought Amiibos for ages, but I've got a couple of new ones to show you. Um, these shelves are all going to change again because I've got so many pickups. I'm going to have to move all the pickups onto here, and this is all going to change again. But as you can see, I've moved my DS games up here, um, which is really cool, and my PC Engine games. And down the bottom here, I've got my Neo Geo. MVS collection and they're all in new boxes which I'll, show, I'll save that for a Neo Geo video so that's it for the changes there the arcades there's no real change guys it's not going to be for a while only that this jammer cab here my good friend Roger came over and we well he played around with it tried to get it working and we found out the power supply is not working but the monitor is A-OK -okay because we took the leads that powers the monitor in this one, plugged them in that one, and it works fine. So that's good news. So all I've got to do in that cab is put a new power supply in there. 
Neo Geo MVS is getting a lot of love. We played that a lot, me and Roger. I played a bit of Samurai Showdown and Windjammers. Fantastic games. Going to be more videos on that, guys. Still haven't installed the spooky remix kit in there. I've got to get round to doing that in the Donkey Kong. And that's it, really, on the arcade. Um, Super Hang On is still down. Um, and Defender's working fine at the moment, which is good. Robotron's working fine. Been playing a lot of Defender. And that's it, really, guys, on the update of the channel, what I've been playing. I ne we're now going to sit down. We're going to go through all of the pickups. I have got a ton of pickups. Right, guys, let's get straight into the pickups. So, first pickup is a GameCube, which I've been wanting for a while. I did have the Pearl one years ago. Stupidly sold it. It was a Mario Strike Special Edition. It was a beautiful Pearl Edition. Um, and then I thought, you know what, I'm not that bothered about... Um, getting a boxed one but I wouldn't mind the Metroid one with a little disc on top which I finally got hold of which is nice and I've got the Game Boy Advance player that this can sit on as well which is nice I can play all the Game Boy Advance games through the GameCube um, I did have one of these back in the day I thoroughly enjoyed it some great games on the GameCube but I'm not a GameCube collector um, this game, this actually did come with a few games, but I've got no intention of playing any of these back again. And I'll probably end up selling these as well. So I've got Harry Potter with it. Um, Extreme Racing, G Racing, which actually is not a bad game. Um, we got 007 Nightfire, never played that. Uh, World Tour, never played that. And Spider-Man. See, if I was going to play Spider-Man, I'd want to play it on the PS4, to be honest with you. I'm not going to go back and play any of those games, so I'll probably sell those on. I've got my favourites on the GameCube, like Zelda, Smash Brothers, Metroid Prime, and stuff like that. They're the ones I will go back to, but I'm not really a GameCube collector, but it is nice to have that. It is nice to play the Game Boy Advance games on this big screen, so I'm chuffed to get that. I didn't pay a lot for that, probably about 60 quid, which I thought was pretty reasonable. Um, and I wasn't too bothered about the box. Um, some consoles, obviously, I do like having the box for. The Super Nintendo is one of them. And the NES, I want the boxes for my favourite 16-bit consoles. But, you know, with these boxes, I haven't got room to display them here. So they end up just going up in the loft anyway. Um, so that was that. I obviously picked up the Zelda Game & Watch that was issued about a month ago. I've played a little bit, it is absolutely beautiful, and it's a great way to play the old Zelda games. Um, I love that Nintendo is doing this, I really do. I'd love to know what they're doing next. What do you think their next Game & Watch will be? Um, be interesting to see. I'd like an F-Zero one, I think an F-Zero would be really cool. There's enough F-Zero games they could stick on here. They could stick the SNES game on here, they could stick the Game Boy, two Game Boy Advance games on here. Um, which would be absolutely amazing. Um, that would be really cool. But yeah, I've got the Mario one as well. So this is really, really nice. I really do like that. Um, we have got, we've got so much to get through here, guys. Honestly, I don't know where to start. NES games, load of NES games um, I've been picking up recently. As you know, I'm still going for the black box, complete black box collection. But in between that, there's not been a lot recently pop up. But I managed to bag uh, RC Pro-Am, which is a fantastic isometric racer. Really is a great game on the, on, the, on the NES. It really is. All these are complete with instructions. I made sure that I'm getting all of these with instructions. I won't show you inside, guys, because we've got so much to get through. But really chuffed to get RC Pro-Am on the NES. Got a lovely copy of Kid Icarus. Um, it's weird that they brought these out on a silver label, not a black label, because it is a very early game. This is quite an expensive game to find. It's complete, again, um, it's all in very good condition, except that spine there has got a bit of wear, as you can see. But that's okay. Th this is really hard and quite an expensive game to find in very good condition. So, you know, you're gonna have to have um, some something slightly wrong with it you know unless you want to pay the full whack of a, a complete inbox great condition game um 
you just have to sacrifice something down the line, you really do. But yeah, I do like Kid Icarus, it is a good game. Oh, Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, what a fantastic game this is. This and Super Mario Brothers. Probably Super Mario Brothers is my favourite, but this is a great game as well. These two, Super Mario Brothers and this game are my favourite Mario games. Barnet Commando. I've never played this, so really chuffed to get this in the collection. Um, I've heard great things about this game. It's, you know, it's one of those platforming action games where the hook is the kind of mechanic of the game. So that's nice to get. We've got um, Puzzle Bobble 2, Rainbow Islands. I prefer Puzzle Bobble, but I'm not a huge Puzzle Bobble fan. I like it. I think it's a good game. Um, and this one's great too. I just love the box art. Look at that. And it is quite a nice pick up and play game. Beautiful box art. And Joe and Mac. I think these were all a... I can't remember where I got... Do you know what? I can't, I've got so much down here, guys. I honestly can't remember where I got half of this stuff. Because I obviously did the game, game gaming market fairly recently. And um, I've got a lot of stuff there. But I can't remember where I got... No, I didn't get this from here. Or did I? I can't, honestly can't remember. Um, yeah, because I showed my game market stuff in the last video. So yeah, this is all eBay stuff. So Joe and Mac. And then we've got Batman, which was recommended to me as a good game, which I've never played. Never played this game, but it's supposed to be an excellent NES game. So chuff to get that. Comes in the box protector as well. Um, we've got more NES games, but they're underneath all the other stuff here. <laughs> so let's go with Mega Drive next. So I'm going, when I'm collecting Mega Drive games, I'm going for Japanese import only. Only because I think the artwork's cooler. I'm not fussed about whether it's power or not because I never collected Mega Drive back in the day. And I actually thought that the Japanese region would be cheaper to collect for. It isn't. <laughs> you know, the games are just as expensive. So I've got Thunder Force 3 which is supposed to be one of the best. I know Roger, my good friend Roger, thinks this is the best version of Thunder Force. It's a nice side-scrolling shooter. And it's, it's in fabulous condition. Box the manual. I've got a very small Mega Drive collection, guys. But, you know, um, it's growing, growing slowly. Um, for, Forgotten Worlds... Um, this is a great arcade conversion. In the arcade, it had rotary sticks. Unfortunately, we don't have that on the Mega Drive, so it doesn't play as well as the arcade version, but graphically, it is excellent. It is very good. And great soundtrack as well. I do love Forgotten's World soundtrack. We've got Cyber Police eSwap. Haven't played this one. Um, I'm not sure, is it a run? I think it's a run and gun game, so that'd be right up my street. We've got Granada X, which I know I have played this before and I've had this in my collection before. I don't know why I got rid of it because it is a very good top down, very strategic shooter. You've got to take your time, you know, you can't just go in there. You're a tank in this one. Um, but it's not a vertical scrolling shooter, you just take your time in it and slowly take out the other tanks. It's a very good game. Look at the box art on that, guys. Superb box art. So these are all games that I know are very good. I'm not picking up any old game for the Mega Drive. Strider, believe it or not, I have never played Strider, um, but I've heard nothing but good things over the years about this game. You know, Super Nintendo didn't really get a Strider. Super Nintendo got a game called Run Saber, that was actually very good, although it was a very short game, but it was a Super Nintendo's answer to Strider, um, which I used to have in my collection. I'm still trying to get that one back, but this wasn't bad. I think this was about 30 or 40 quid. Not, not an expensive game, so nice to get that. And then we got a gift from my good friend Paul, Retro Bait. Um, he sent me a load of Spectrum games, because um, you know I love my Spectrum guys. Um, and they're all Hit Squad games. So we've got CDI. Uh, don't know anything about this game. Now I've only got one Hit Squad game and that is R-Type. So this is a nice 
I'm not going for a full set, guys, but it is nice to get a few hit squad games. Um, Robocop. Don't think I've ever played that. See, a lot of these games came later on in the Sinclair Spectrum's life. So not many early Spectrum games here. They're all late Spectrum games after Burner, which is obviously an arcade conversion. Red Heat. Do you remember that film, guys? I, I know, I haven't watched that film since it was released. I'll have to go and watch this film. Was, was it with James Belushi? I think it was, wasn't it? I do love watching an Arnold film over Christmas. Especially Jingle All The Way. That's my favourite. Mikey. Uh, that's an arcade game. Very rare arcade game to get. And that's been converted to the Spectrum. We've got um, Licence to Kill. James Bond with Timothy Dalton. Just saw the new James Bond film, guys. I don't know what you think. A lot of people were going, mm, didn't quite like the ending. Um, I enjoyed it for what it was. I think they'll reboot James Bond for the next generation. It'll all change again. So I think da Daniel Craig got a good send-off. I think he was a great Bond. And um, I really enjoyed the da Daniel Craig years. And Casino Royale being one of my favourite Daniel Craig movies. Miami Vice. It's lovely Jan Hammer soundtrack to that. Endure Racer, which I did have back in the day. What a fantastic Spectrum game this is. Um, one of my favourite, it would probably make one of my top 10 Spectrum games, Endure Racer. Played excellently. So it's nice to have that. And New Zealand Story, um, which is another arcade conversion. So Paul, thank you so much for sending me those games, mate. Much appreciated. There is a parcel on its way, buddy. Now, next up, I've got some Game Boy Advance games and a Game Boy game. These came from my good friend Leon, who's actually a special effects guy on a lot of things like Game of Thrones and stuff like that. Always love to know how, what, what he's up to and what he's filming on next. He's a massive retro game collector, and he had a few games he was selling on, and it's nice to get back a lovely copy, a mint copy of Wario Land 4, which I love Wario. Um, I wish Nintendo would do more with Wario because he's such a great character. Well, they do, don't they? They've just brought out Wario Land, which I've got. So shut up, me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do love Wario Land. Such a great character. Um, I prefer him than Luigi. I think he's just... He's a naughty little character. A naughty little man in a beard. Um, or moustache, rather. He's cool. Very, very cool. We've got Super Mario Land six golden coins absolute classic on the game boy and this again is in fantastic condition so leon thank you so much for that mate and one of my favorite games on the game boy advance advance wars great strat strategy turn-based ar um, arcade game turn-based game um very similar to what julian gollop was doing with ufo enemy unknown it was sort of Nintendo's answer to that. Very good. I love Advance Wars. That is one franchise I'd love to see return to the Switch. Um, talking of Switch, we've got a bunch of Switch games here, guys. Um, Cotton Reboot, um, which is, I think it's the Sharp, is it the Sharp's version? Um, I can't remember which version this is now. Um can't remember guys but it is a computer version of the arcade game uh, com converted to the Nintendo Switch and I played this and it's a really good side-scrolling shooter really colorful reminds me of Death Smiles I don't know if you've ever played Death Smiles but it's got those kind of those kind of graphics which I really like it's quite an, not an easy but it's it's not hard it's not like a bullet hell or anything like that. it's just a nice easy playthrough uh, cotton. Um, I really enjoy that. In fact, I enjoy all the cotton games, really. Um, the one on the Super Nintendo is really good. It's called Cotton 100%. Um, we've got Monster Hunter Rise. Big game. Um, I, was, I, don't, I wasn't quite sure whether to get this or not, but I fancied something big at the time. Um, and this was just before I got the BS4. Um, but I will give it a go. It looks amazing. It's a lot easier than a lot of the earlier Monster Hunter games, so... Um, a lot more accessible, I should say. So I'm looking forward to playing that, actually. Mario Tennis Aces. I've heard nothing but great things about this game. I do love tennis games. And um, I'm, I'm, I think they've made a few updates to this as well. So this would be a great party game over Christmas. 
And another great party game over Christmas is Mario Golf. I got this because I was around my, my partner's cousin's house uh, a week ago and we were playing um, on the Wii, you know, Wii Sports, and we were playing the golf game. And we had so much fun playing that golf game that I thought, you know what, I'm going to get Mario Golf. Sorry, guys, I'm looking for something here um, to go with this game. And it is. I went out and bought golf clubs. <laughs> I went out and bought golf clubs because I wanted to make it as realistic as possible and as challenging as possible. Um, so I'm really looking forward to playing Mario Golf with the golf clubs. I've got a great space here for it. Um, and I think it would be an absolutely fantastic party game over Christmas. So that was my reason for that. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, I picked up Divinity Original Sin 2, which was actually a limited run game. Excuse me. Physical copy. Um, I've heard nothing but great reviews about this game. I'm really interested to play this game. Sounds right up my street. Dungeons and Dragons, kind of turn-based, building your party up, um, creating new players, loads of enemies, you know, in that fantasy world of Dungeons and Dragons. So I'm really looking forward to that. I've got loads of games to play, guys. Curse Moon, Bloodstained Curse Moon 2. Look at the box art on that. Absolutely stunning. And this plays like a like an early NES game um, in a sort of Castlevania world. It's the same guy did Castlevania, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But it looks absolutely beautiful. So looking forward to playing that one. And then we've got another Switch game, which is Carrion. Nice physical release of Carrion. This time you play the enemy, which is on the cover. You play a monster where you're working your way through a metro metroidvania world killing the human beings to get out and as you're going through absorbing all the toxins your your monsters getting bigger and bigger and getting more abilities looks a really cool game and I'm, I'm really happy to get this as a physical copy um and next a huge thank you to my good friend scott uh, sega zombie um he sent me these two wii games and I've already played and completed one of them, which is one of my favourite Wii games, which is House of the Dead Overkill. Um, what a fantastic game. You know, I should have played the director's cut because me and my son played this. Josh, we loved this, didn't we? We played through it in, what, an hour or so, two hours, I think it was, completed it. And it, the ending wasn't as I remembered. And then as we got to the end and went back into the options, it says play the director's cut. So I'm thinking if we play through that, then a lot of the stuff that was cut out will reappear. Like the, the, the big boss at the end, she's just so bizarre, honestly, guys. Um, and a lot of it was cut. So I'll have to go back and play it in the, the director's cut next time. But what a fantastic game. And Scott, thanks so much for that, mate. Mad World as well. Um, cheap game to pick up. Really good game. It's all in black and white. Until you kill someone, then it's just blood on the screen. But really cool game. So cheers for that, buddy. Really appreciate that. Right, so my next pickup is something really special to me. Because this is something I got as a Christmas present back in the day. And I've been looking for one of these for a long time. They just do not come up. They're extremely rare to find now, boxed. And I spent a lot of time on this back in the day as a little kid, probably around about seven or eight, something like that. And I absolutely adored this game. It is Champion Racer, the LED handheld game. Don't know if you remember this, guys, but this is an absolute blast from the past for me. I absolutely love this game. And it's still... A really good game to play today. I really enjoy playing this today. There's not many LED games that I enjoy, but this one is still really good. The box is not in the best condition. You know, it is a little bit tatty. But just to find one in a box, because the box was just... I had to get it with the box, because I remember the box so well. I thought it was such a cool box. And I have the other one, which I had. These are the only two LEDs games I've got, really. I've got a couple of tabletop games, like Caveman... Firefox. Um, I'm still needing Astro Wars. But these two games I loved as a kid. I both had these for Christmas. Um, this is like Space Invaders, but this one is like um, Champion. Was it Turbo? 
I can't remember the name of the game now. It's like an arcade game, Turbo Racer or something like that. It's a really cool game. Um, just comes with some polystyrene inside. There's no instructions, but it's in really good condition. And it is a fantastic game. So you turn it on, you've got the LEDs there, guys. Look, can you see? And you've got a shift gear, so you can move your car up the screen. And as you move up, you've got to move across the screen and avoid hitting the cars. And you can shift up another gear to get more points. And you can move back down again as well. So, you know, it's a really cool game. And it brings back so many memories. It really does. It really does. I'm so chuffed to get this. It's such a beautiful little game. Oh, my God. So many memories with this. This was my game that I took everywhere in the car. You know, people talk about the Game Boy and stuff, but this, this was it for me. This is all I had. I carried it everywhere and really enjoyed it. Just the noises. I haven't played this. It must be for 35 years. So it's really nice to have that back in the collection. Um, I paid about 65, 70 quid for this. And I paid 30 quid for that on Facebook Marketplace, um, which was a really good deal. Because these are really hard to find, guys. They really are. So these look great up on the shelf. Um, I'm not going to collect any more. The only, only, the only other game I want is the Astro Wars, because I had that back in the day as well. So there we go. Two lovely LED handheld games. The only other two I have is Firefox and caveman which is a great game this is a really playable game today as well really cool game so it's nice to have all the ones i had back in the day as a kid right oh we've got another nes game this is another this was a good find this was about 120 quid it's in immaculate condition it is a mattel first edition mario brothers beautiful condition um, one sold about a week earlier for about 180 and for some reason this went for a lot less and I think it's in immaculate condition absolutely beautiful condition so I'm up to about how many games now have I got three six 13 black box games I'm going for a complete black box NES set UK NES set so that's really nice to get that um, still a couple of really common ones I haven't got, like tennis. I haven't got tennis yet. And 10 yard fight, I think it is. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um, we've got this from the London Gaming Market. This is a really unusual joystick. It's got like a, I don't know, it spins around. Be great, great for games like Gyrus. Unfortunately, Gyrus only came out in America or in Japan. Or it did come out in PAL, I think. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool little joystick. I didn't pay much for this at the London Game Market. I thought it was a bit different, a bit unusual. Um, so that's cool. Um, what else have we got? We've got some Amiibo here. I had to get this because you know how much of a fan I am of Metroid Dread. I've got the Metroid Dread um, Amiibo, the EMMI and Samus battling it out. I mean, that's just a typical battle scene in the game. So I probably won't open this one. This actually makes for a really nice display piece on the shelf. Really, really cool to have that. And I've got a Dark Amiibo as well. Sorry, a Dark Samus, a Dark Amiibo. A Dark Samus. So there's only the um, little Metroid I need now for the complete Metroid Amiibo collection. More Metroid stuff, guys. Finally got, this I've been wanting for ages as well. I missed out first time around when it came out and these have shot up in price and I managed to get it for what it came out at retail price originally, which is around about 225 quid, something like that. And it is the beautiful Metroid Samus Edition 3DS, which is absolutely stunning, guys. Really, really cool. I've wanted this for such a long time. Um, I don't have a decent 3DS, you see. I've got a battered old one up there that I do use. And I will use this one. 
it's absolutely stunning. Some of the games on here, I love playing some of the 3D games on here, especially the Sega Arcade, the Sega Ages, I think it's called. It's got all the arcade games like Power Drift and Space Harrier, but this is an absolutely beaut of a 3DS, it really is. I used to love the 3DS. I've got a nice 3DS collection. There's only a few more titles I want on it, but it, I, I really did enjoy the 3DS. It had some great games, and I do like going back and playing, especially the arcade games. So that is absolutely perfect for me. So I'm going to have to get like a display stand for this or something like that, because it is really, really nice. So not finished on the Metroid stuff yet, guys. So to go with that... I've got this special edition Metroid Samus Returns box set. Again, I've wanted this for ages. I've finished this game. I thought it was an excellent game. And I think Metroid Dread just kind of um, really cleared up a few of the issues with the game. You know, that whole um, mechanic of uh, counter-attacks in this was really good. But it was like one of the biggest mechanics in this game, you know, and a lot of people didn't like it. So they kind of narrowed it down in Metroid Dread and didn't make it so prominent. Um, I like this game though. I think there were some great bosses in this game. And this is a great set. It comes with a key ring, uh, DVD, and a little Game Boy um, holder, or Game Boy case. I'll just show you quickly. So if you're a Metroid fan, I love getting the Metroid limited editions and the Metroid. So it comes with this Game Boy box, which you can store your game in. That is really nice. The game sealed, which I'm not going to open because I've already got a sealed copy of, uh, not sealed, an open copy. Then we've got a lovely art book as well. So this is Metroid 2, basically, guys. And it is a beautiful game, absolutely fantastic game. I have to replay that actually after playing Dread. I could do with another Metroid game. I can't wait for Metroid 4, I really can't. Um, so what else we got here? We have the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection on the Switch. Some great games on here, guys. We got Akari Warriors, Iron Tank, M M Alpha Mission, um, POW. There's loads more on here. I can't see because I haven't opened this up yet, but there is some really cool games on here. This was like 35 quid. You know, they're quite common, quite cheap, and it's a really good package of SN early SNK games. Oh, God, there's so much stuff here, guys. And then we have a, a Famicom AV, which I've got to get modded. Now, I've wanted one of these for a while because they're so small, so dinky, almost like a little NES Mini. Um, and I thought it'd be cool to have one set up on this little four inch TV as well as my PC engine, but it, it only comes up in black and white, so I've got to get this modded. Um, it's funny, it'll come up color on my new OLED uh TV, but it won't on the on the uh four inch Sony Triniton, so I'm gonna have to get this modded. Um, but that's really nice. I'll show you inside really quickly, it's really tiny, really cool. Lovely little console that, I really do like Famicom AV. So that's another pickup, and then we've got this, this is the bargain guys, I'm sorry to keep telling you about bargains, they're out there. This is a bargain. So I've got a Famicom twin, and I've been wanting one of these for a while. My good friend Paul was looking on Yahoo auctions for me, and I don't know, they're probably going for around about 150, 200 quid, something like that, for a decent one. And this one was up for £75. Oh, actually, no, it was on an auction. And I won it for £75, which is unbelievable. Um, but I can, tell, I can tell you why I won it for £75. Quid, because when you look at the description of the console, the guy said no returns. So I don't think a lot of people bid on this because they were worried that it was broken. So I messaged the guy. I said, look, is this working? Because I, I will bid on this and I hope to win it and um, he said yeah it's all working um, but he just accepted no return so I thought you know what I'll just I'll just take a, a punt on this 
and I won it for 75 quid, guys. Unbelievable. I mean, the box is not in the best state. It's got a rip at the back here. And I don't think it even comes with any instructions. It doesn't. So there's no instructions. It's just the box. But it is a complete working Famicom twin. It all works. The disc system works. The carts work. And this is great because I've got a load of Famicom discs up there, which I've never played. I've wanted to play for a while because the sound chip is better in this than it is on the NES. It puts out another sound channel, so you get much better sound on the Famicom Twin. So I'm really looking forward to playing some really obscure Famicom games and some games that never got uh, ported over to the UK or USA, some really cool arcade games, which we're going to get into, guys, because I've got loads down here. I also picked up... Before I got that, I thought I was going to have to go down the route of the Famicom disc system. So these you can pick up fairly reasonably, guys. I got this for about £110, and it's absolutely mint. It comes with all the posters. So that Zelda poster that I've got on the wall came in here. It also comes with the Metroid poster. And it's all in its original bags. It's all working and for me, it's just a nice piece to have on the shelf because you know how much I love my Nintendo. So it's got the original Metroid flyers in here, all the game flyers, all the instructions, all the advertisement leaflets. You know, it's, it's just, I just had to have this. It's immaculate, it smells, it smells brand new. This has never been used before. You know, it's, so it's just nice to have a piece of early Nintendo history like this in such immaculate condition. Um, will I use it? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely use it. I'll have a go on it. But my main Famicom uh, console is going to be the twin. It's the main way I'm going to play these games. This is really going to be just like a display piece, really. But I will, I will fire it up. And I will have a go on it because I'm itching to see how it plays. But that's really nice to have. The Famicom disc system. Complete in box. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Really chuffed to get that. Now, last thing, guys. Games. We've got a ton of games here. Famicom games. Um, We've got Rockman 5. So this came from the London gaming market. I got for £40. I've never played any of the Rockman games. Tell a lie. I played Rockman X or Mega Man uh, X on the Super Nintendo. But I've never played any NES or Famicom games. We've got Twinbee. Nice box version of Twinbee. Nice little shoot 'em up there. That was 30 quid at the London gaming market. Uh, this is a recent pickup, Star Force, great little shooter, great little shooter. And we're going to do a video on all these games. We're going to play some of these games, guys, in the next video. We've got, this is a good one, Rygar. Rygar on the Famicom. Look at that box art. Look at that box art. But unfortunately, it does, it's not true to the arcade. They give you the screenshots in the back there. But the game is a bit more of an adventure than it is of an arcade side-scrolling action game. But I, it was one of my favourite arcade games where I got, I got an original PCB. So I had to get this. I'm itching to play this. I don't know what it's like. I've only seen videos of it on YouTube. But I had to get this because I do love Rygar. And it'd be interesting to see what that Famicom version's like. Gunhead. Another great shooter on the Famicom. Guys, we're going to do videos on these, don't you worry. Because, I, you know, I haven't played half of these. But I do like the shooters that are on the Famicom. Uh, could I show you Rockman? Yeah, Rockman 4 as well. I got from the London Gaming Market. Which is nice. That was, what, 40 quid again. And then we've got... Oh, do you know what? I don't know what the name of this is. I looked it up at the time, but I can't remember the name of it. I thought it was just RPG, but it's not. It's the name of another game, but it is another shooter for the Famicom. Uh, this was a nice little bundle on eBay, so I paid 60 quid for these three games. 
And I got Twinby, Konami. So nice little Konami box there. And I got the Goonies, which I used to play on my Nintendo Red Tent. I really do miss this game. Brilliant game. Absolutely brilliant little platform game. If you've never played the Goonies, guys. And Ye Ear Kung Fu. Used to love this in the arcade. Used to play this in Twickenham Arcade, Ye Ear Kung Fu. Getting all the different battles. Used to think I was Bruce Lee playing this game. You've got the guy of the nunchaku and the chain and the tonfa. Such a cool little game. So nice to have a little Konami connection, collection going on there. And then we've got a few more here. <laughs> Massive pickups. Um, Raid on Bungling Bay. Which I believe was actually a Nintendo arcade game. It actually came out. Because I remember John's arcade doing a video on this. And he created the actual cabinet for the guy who actually created the game. So it'd be interesting to play that. It's like an aeroplane game. We're flying over a map. And these lovely Namcop games, which I had years ago, and I'd love to get a collection of these going back again because they are beautiful little boxes. Um, so it's the Namcop set. This is number 13. It's pro wrestling. And I just love these little boxes. Little box art. Isn't that cool? Pac-Man. And Xevious. Got all these at the London Gaming Market. Uh, Alan did me a great deal on that. So that is all of my pickups. I'm pretty sure I'm looking round. <laughs> I think that is it. So guys, this has been a long video, but I wanted to do it even longer. So what I'm going to do, make this a double bill. So as this is a Christmas edition, and I want don't just want to do a pickups video, I want to do a gameplay video as well. We might play some arcade games. We might play some Famicom blames. I might even make this a part... A free parter. So whatever you do, I'm going to post this video. Whatever you do, make sure you watch part two, which is following on from this video right now. I'm going to put them up both right now. So make sure you watch the next video, guys. We're going to do some gameplays of Defender, Robotron, Donkey Kong. We're going to do the whole lot, guys. So make sure you see part two. It's Christmas. Let's have a celebration, guys. Let's play some games. That's what we've got them for, isn't it? So, guys, see you in part two.